Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're taking a look at the first part of AP Chemistry Unit 9, Section 3, which is about thermodynamically favored processes. Now, as I mentioned in the first video of this unit, we're taking a look at the second law of thermodynamics here in the first half of Unit 9. Now, when we say the second law of thermodynamics, this is the law that essentially says that the entropy, or like we learned earlier, the disorder, of an isolated system will always increase over time. And also, we can say that every spontaneous process increases the entropy of the universe. We saw in the first video of this unit that the universe tends to favor processes that increase in entropy. It's just something that tends to happen more easily than processes that decrease in entropy most of the time. Now, when we say a spontaneous process, sometimes this is a word that some students tend to uh, confuse or misunderstand with something else. And so very often in AP Chemistry, instead of using the word spontaneous, we use the phrase thermodynamically favored process, or we sometimes abbreviate that TFP. Uh, basically, a thermodynamically favored process is just a process that is going to happen at a specific temperature. So, for example, uh, if we say something is spontaneous, we also say it is a thermodynamically favored process. Now, when we say thermodynamically favored, there are two reasons why chemical reactions, or any processes for that matter, can be thermodynamically favored. They can be driven by enthalpy, and specifically uh, decreasing enthalpy, or they can be driven by entropy, or more specifically, increasing entropy. So in Unit 6, when we talked about the first law of thermodynamics, we said that most reactions are exothermic. If you start thinking about all the chemical reactions out there that you're most familiar with, you'll probably find that most of them are exothermic. And that's because the universe tends to favor exothermic reactions. They are favored in the universe. That's just how it is. The universe likes exothermic reactions. And in the same vein, we can say that the universe likes reactions in which the entropy increases. And so entropy is another driving force of chemical reactions. And so if you see a chemical reaction where entropy is increasing or delta S is positive, well, the universe favors that increasing entropy. Now, if both of these statements are true, if you have a reaction that's both exothermic and its entropy is going up, it's, it's, its delta S is positive, then that means that that chemical reaction is going to be thermodynamically favored at all temperatures. It will always be thermodynamically favored. And there are some processes out there that are like that. Now, on the other hand, we can also say that if none of those is true for any reaction, then that reaction is not going to be thermodynamically favored at any temperature. So what that means is if you come across a reaction and the reaction is endothermic, well, the universe doesn't really like endothermic reactions, and if the entropy is decreasing, delta S is negative, well, the universe doesn't like decreasing entropy either, well, that process will never be thermodynamically favored. That means it's never going to take place uh, spontaneously for all practical purposes. Now, does that mean that that reaction can never take place? Well, not exactly, and we'll see how that can uh, be the case in a future lesson. Now, let's think about a couple of chemical reactions. Now, in the previous video, we actually calculated the delta S for this reaction right here. Now, I believe it was a positive number, wasn't it? I forget exactly the number, but we can look at the states here and predict that the entropy is going to increase in this reaction. Well, let's think about it in our own experience. Does this reaction happen? If I take carbon, as in like a piece of coal, and I expose it to steam, water vapor, is that coal going to turn into carbon monoxide gas, which is highly toxic, by the way, and hydrogen gas? 
which is rather explosive? Well, no, it doesn't. This reaction really does not happen. And if we look at the thermodynamic data for this, we can see why that's the case. The delta H for this reaction is positive, which implies that this is an endothermic reaction. Now, does the universe like endothermic processes? No, it doesn't. So we would say that enthalpy is not going to drive that reaction. The universe really doesn't like the fact that this is an endothermic reaction. What about the uh, delta S though? Well, we can see that the delta S is positive, which tells us entropy is increasing, and the universe likes that, doesn't it? That is a favored process. So yes, the entropy is going to drive that reaction. So whenever only one of the two forces is favorable, then that means that the process is only going to be favored at specific temperatures. Now, the way I remember this is that since both delta H and delta S are positive, that means that this reaction is only going to be thermodynamically favored at very positive temperatures or at very high temperatures. So if you were to raise this temperature above a certain threshold, all of a sudden this reaction is going to, to be thermodynamically favored. Let's try another reaction. Here's one that we've taken a look at a couple times over the, the course of AP Chemistry. We have uh, silver ions aqueous and chloride ions aqueous produce silver chloride solid. Now does this reaction happen? And you might realize that yes, this reaction actually does take place. This is a normal precipitation reaction. We've written that net ionic equation a couple times uh, over this course. Let's think about the delta H and delta S here. Now delta S is a negative value. That makes sense because we're going from aqueous, which is a rather high uh, entropy level, down to solid, which is a much lower entropy level. So this is negative. The universe does not really favor losing entropy, does it? So entropy does not drive that reaction. What about its delta H though? Well, it's a negative value, which means it's exothermic. And the universe likes that, doesn't it? So the fact that this is an exothermic reaction does drive the reaction. So since both of these numbers are negative, that means that this reaction is going to be thermodynamically favored at lower temperatures, or the way I think about it is more negative temperatures, since they're both negative. So if only one force is favored, it's only going to be favored at certain temperatures. So let's review. Once again, if we have a reaction that's exothermic, delta H is negative, and entropy is increasing, well, the universe likes both of those things. So it's going to be a thermodynamically favored process at all temperatures. Now, if it's the reverse of that, and it's endothermic, and entropy is decreasing, well, the universe doesn't like either of those things. So it will not be a thermodynamically favored process at any temperature. If both of them are positive, well, that means that this reaction is driven by the entropy, and it's going to be a thermodynamically favored process at very positive or very high temperatures only. And if they're both a negative, that means that it's driven by the enthalpy, since the universe likes exothermic reactions, and it'll be a thermodynamically favored process at those low temperatures only. So you need to know this, okay, because they do expect you to know this, this little chart here on the AP chemistry exam. Now, as we talk about thermodynamic favorability, we've talked about things that happen, things that don't happen. Is there a way to actually quantify and put a number to this concept of thermodynamic favorability? And the answer is yes, there is. In fact, that's what we're going to talk about in the next video, which is about delta G, or Gibbs free energy. I hope you join me for that video. I'm Jeremy Krug. Hope to see you there.